Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got Five Options show with Marta and Anna. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge. And if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. Hello everyone, this is Marta. And this is Anna. And I can't believe we are back after so long. And we have our wonderful technician. Lasse. Thank you, thank you. Hi. Yeah. Yes. And we also have a surprise for all of you guys. Something completely new on those episodes at You've Got Five Options. But we actually have a guest who has solved her own challenge. So we are now going great. So. Yes. Our dear guest, please tell us, who are you? And by the way, uh, sorry, uh, we forgot to tell you that this is You've Got Five Options, <laughs> if you have any doubt. It's a minor detail. <laughs> it's a minor detail. So welcome to You've Got Five Options. Yeah, Marta, doesn't, it's okay. Doesn't Jingle say that? Yeah, it actually does. <laughs> yes. So why the hell are we saying that for more than a year now? Okay. Well, it doesn't matter. Hello, Kate. Hello. I'm so happy to be here. We are happy to have you. And as Marta said, this is a very unique way of doing things. So we actually have a person who has solved her own challenge and came today for a little interview with five different options. So, uh, Kate, before we start, I would just like uh, you to share with the rest. How did you actually end up here? Yeah, well, actually, uh, I actually came to uh, Denmark for the love of my life. Uh, that was about uh, three and a half years ago. So if you ever want to find a, <laughs> a, f uh, a foreign American woman, go to Germany. <laughs> so okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I've actually uh, came actually to Europe much earlier. I've been in Europe uh, six and a half years uh, in Germany and then three and a half. So a total of like 10 years of being in Europe. So long time, long, long time. Long, long time. Okay. And tell us then how did you specifically end up here? on this wonderful radio show. Yeah, well, actually, I've been making this initiative uh, within the uh, within the uh, international community, uh, where I, I feel when I've been talking to a lot of internationals, uh, there's, uh, I feel, a big struggle within the international community on getting a job uh, within Denmark. And uh, a lot of them, like, you know, when a lot of people or Danes think about um, internationals, they think, oh, we're here to get your money <laughs> to use your welfare state. Okay. And uh, that's not really the case. Like, I just came here for love. I just, yeah, that was really the only reason why. And I think when I talk to a lot of internationals, it's about, you know, of course, they want to, like, have a job. They want to work. They want to be part of society. And it's not about just uh, living off the welfare state at all. Of course, we want to be active. Uh, we want to uh, support, be part of the relationship as well, like, financially, and be able to support that, of course, because of, there's a big reason of why there's a huge amount of divorces. And a big, the biggest one is actually uh, money. So, yeah, that's true. <laughs> so um, yeah, I guess for me, it's just uh, talking to these internationals and going through the struggle of having five to six different jobs within the last three and a half years with only less than uh, two months of unemployment in one period of time, I kind of realized I must be doing something right. And I just wanted to go and share the tips and tricks. And uh, I've been uh, doing a few speaking events. And I thought, well, why not reach out to you guys and try to reach uh, an audience to uh, help the uh, community uh, within Denmark on, uh, and just sharing this uh, experience. That is exactly what I wanted to know, Kate. And I think we are super happy that you have reached out to us because uh, what I think you have to say, it's very valuable for many of us. I also think you made a very good point that, you know, uh, people from other countries, most of the time they want to be active. They want to have work, you know, not having a work. It's really bad for your uh, mental health, not, not to mention financial state. Come on, guys. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is a really, really great point. And uh, guys. Our dear listeners, now you know that it is possible just to reach out to us, to You've Got Five Options, and be invited for the radio show and share your own experiences. So please feel very free to contact us on our website, the5options.com, and you might be sitting in Kate's seat. Who knows? Well, of course, not on Kate. She will <laughs> go home and then there will be seat available. Yeah, I will stop now. Okay. <clears throat> that was awkward. 
so we have this amazing situation where we have a guest who has described her challenge from a few years ago. And based on all the experiences for actually successfully finding a job in Denmark as a foreigner without really speaking Danish, at least at the beginning, right? Yeah, I can I can tell a little Dansk, man. It's it's still not as good as it could be, and it's still very limited. But it, it is possible. I Definitely. think your Danish is really good, actually. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because we were talking in the yeah, kitchen yeah, yeah. earlier. In the in just, Danish. Yes, we did. And yeah. I was just like, I'm just going to go with the flow on this one. <laughs> so. But at least at the beginning, I guess uh, the Danish was not there yet not really. when you were just starting. Yeah. So thank you so much for being here and wanting to share your five tips. I'm just going to read your challenge, which is actually from three, three and a half year ago. Yeah. And then we'll go on with it. So. Here comes the challenge. I have lived in Denmark for many years and I am having a hard time getting a job in Denmark. I have a degree and I'm highly educated. I live with my partner and is the breadwinner of the family. I want to contribute to Danish society and be active in a job. Plus, I want to help my partner as we are a team and I want to participate financially as money is always the strain in our relationship. How do you go about getting a job in Denmark being an international lovely of course situation itself was not lovely but lovely <laughs> that you have solved it because as you said you had how many jobs Kate did you had so far about five to six five to six jobs three. with less than two months of unemployment period I think this is quite remarkable to be honest thank you you're very welcome I guess we would be very curious about listening to the five tips you have for us should we start with We will. We would ask you to tell us the five tips shortly because the answer, and we will be uh, discussing those tips in more detail, will be spread over two episodes. So just go ahead and give the five tips and then we will start going into... Interviewing you. Yeah, great. So the first thing I would say uh, before you look into any job is to recognize your own strengths. And then the second step you need to do is to analyze your options. Uh, the third one is to definitely use your network. And the fourth one is, of course, targeting your application. And the final one is just staying positive and going for it. Mm-hmm. Okay, very, very good. So I'll surprise everyone with saying that let's go for the first option. <laughs> Jesus, Marta, you are so much out of control today. It's because we are back in studio. <laughs> Well, going into uh, more depth with recognizing your strengths, actually, before I came to Denmark, I was actually uh, still looking for a job. I was to the point where I was doing my PhD. It wasn't working out. I was also an English teacher at the time for about four and a half years. It was also uh, going down. And sometimes, yeah, you just have to go through the flow of life, so to say. And uh, I was just before, uh, while I was looking, I was, yeah, well, during that time, it was also the time when my now husband actually uh, invited me to move in with him in Denmark. And that was actually a huge decision because I was also offered a job in China to be an English teacher. And I decided that at the point, uh, what would make me more happy? And that was my husband, uh, now husband. And so then I just decided to uh, go and look for a job and uh, try to make this uh, relationship work. Uh, Yeah, and it just wasn't working. Part of it was because of the visa. But then while I was in the searching process, while I was waiting for my visa, I was thinking about, okay, I have a master's in European studies. So what is European studies? It's basically a political science in the EU and economics. So when I was originally planning to move to Brussels, actually, and then, of course, love happens, (laughs) so to say. And then I was like, okay, what am I going to do with this degree in Denmark? It's not going to work. I just decided to, okay, what are my strengths? What am I good at? And this actually just about reflecting on your own life experiences. So, okay, A, I was an English teacher for four and a half years. Okay, that means that I'm really good at presentation skills. That's one thing. When I was doing my bachelor's within the United States, I was actually doing uh, some sales during that time to support myself for about a year. And I said, okay, great. I have a sales experience. Uh, that's one another thing. I also did internships where I learned about teamwork and doing a different administrative tasks. Great. That's another thing. So I just basically made a list based on all these life experiences experiences that I had and said, okay, what can I do uh, do with these? And then actually that really helped me in going into the next step, uh, which is uh, analyzing your, your options. Because what you are saying, it's actually sounds simple, but for me, it's extremely eye opening because I think like from a perspective of a person who is now searching for a job, for me, it was extremely simple to fall into my standard 
job positions. You know, I was always a business process manager. So naturally, you are looking for the same type of an employment. And you don't even think about different strengths you have. And actually, I have plenty of other things I can do but they are not under that official job title. So I think many people are falling into this trap of trying to find a job that is somehow in the same area of what they were always working with. That's exactly. And also, I think with a lot of internationals who come here, of course, you want to use your degree. I've talked to a lot of engineers, IT. They're also having a really, really difficult time. But sometimes if that life force is kind of blocking you, maybe that's just a sign saying, okay, maybe it's about just changing your mindset and thinking of going into another different direction in life, you know, and that's what exactly what I did. Just when when I did making this list, I was I just knew that when I had to come to Denmark, I would have to reinvent myself. And, and And that actually helped me a lot with uh, going into the market, which is the next step, which is uh, very uh, similar with analyzing your options. So, yeah. Okay. And I think this is really great what you say about reinventing yourself, but looking deeper, you know, not only looking at the jobs that you have done so far and the experiences that you have had in the different jobs that you've done, but also looking at what you've been doing at the university and looking at like really deeply into what are other potential things, what are other experiences that I have. So also go about it a little bit like, you know, 360 degrees. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I also did like Model United Nations, which is also a role play of uh, taking uh, some th- uh, another country and representing it even if you don't agree with in the end coming to a conclusion that also was uh, leading me to uh, doing negotiation skills making that as another list and that actually goes into like maybe I should just go into the analyzing your options part because it's just so tied in together is that when once I was able to recognize your my, my strengths I was just looking what was open in, in the market actually one of the things uh, I looked into was this positive uh, list uh, which is on uh, new in Denmark and what this positive list means is that if if there is a need uh, for the Danish market, they will the Danish government will be willing to give you a visa that uh, that will be processed much more quickly because they actually really need this uh, field of expertise. So actually, when I was looking down the list, I was like, oh, sales and marketing, maybe I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I was actually really shocked and said, okay, you know, I, I realized that if this is what the Danish society needs, Like one, and I took the list, my list of my strengths and was able to analyze a look at the options that was presented for me, uh, looking and being open to what's in the market. I said, yeah, like let's just, uh, I just went for it, and it worked out really well. So yeah, that's a really, really good tip because many people maybe don't even know or think about that. So you guys, if you are looking for a job, look at that list. You said it was at New in Denmark. Is yes. that a website? Yes, it's on the government website. Like if you go to the visa called New in Denmark, you can just even on Google, just go to Positive List Denmark and it's just going to show up uh, on New in Denmark. And, Positive uh, then, List Denmark. Yes, exactly. Okay. Okay, okay, so it gives you actually the opportunity for your application to be processed faster. Yes. Because that's something that they actually are looking for in Denmark. So I think that's a very valuable tip. Yes, and I have to say that I just remembered once I've heard about a guy who was an engineer and then he was sending his CV, he couldn't find a job. So he was, of course, stressing the engineering skills. And then he sent one CV when he put like everything he has ever done. He put that he was when he was uh, uh, like a teenager and studying, he was some sort of like little manager guider of, of some kids at camps. So he was managing all the kids. And then he was actually offered a team lead position because mm-hmm. they said, we can see that you can manage people and you can manage little people so we will give you a shot at this so you know I think in a CV that he just put there because he was desperate and it was not his professional career path but time job that he had back in a university when he was just trying to do something over the summer and that brought him a team lead position also when I was thinking you know when we were students we were delivering newspapers in the night time who would put that in a CV come on yeah I can bike And I can find an address in a darkness. But on the other hand, it shows you that you have a resistance and resilience to wake up every goddamn night at, let's say, four o'clock in the morning, go in a night and deliver things. So that shows something about your character and your work ethic. So I think that this is a very, very interesting, not totally like novel, but interesting overlooked approach to look at your strengths from the perspective of what have I been doing my entire life, except of just a 
typical jobs I have or my education. No, that's exactly right. It's really just about matching your career choice、uh, to your strengths, and maybe that's also about、uh, being honest with yourself as well. And that's actually another story I would like to share of when I was actually、uh, I went in for a job interview, and you know I thought the interview was going great and everything, and then I was actually talked about like he asked me the question of like where's your career like. Where do you want to go with your life? And I said, Oh, I want to be head of sales one day. Then、uh, he called me and、uh, said, Well, you know, we took someone else because they just had more experience than you, and it was simple as that. But then I actually ruined to ever have a chance and ever being in that company again because I saw that they had like a marketing position. I was like, Oh, like I also saw that you had marketing. And he's like, Well, I thought you were really wanted to be head of sales one day. And I said, Yeah, well, you know, like I just want to go in with the flow life because I was so desperate. But I just I didn't really realize that just marketing just Wasn't one of my strengths at that time,、mm-hmm. and it didn't show in my CV at all. And I wasn't being a, in that process. I was not being a hundred percent honest with myself regarding my strengths. And because of that, I have lost every opportunity. Because actually, when I was、uh, when one of my previous employers was helping me、uh, get a job, and、uh, he actually used the network as well.、Uh, that's another tip. We'll come back to later. <laughs> But、uh, actually, he、uh, reached out, and、uh, they, that company reached out to him, and then they connected us, and then they found out that this was the same person from like two, three years ago. And they said, like they actually remembered me in the most negative way possible. So that's something for everyone to learn as well.、Yeah. And that's the biggest mistake I ever made. And、uh, I learned from it definitely. But it is about like being honest with yourself, with your strengths. Just don't go make a list and saying, oh, I think I can do it. No, you have to know and be honest with yourself with that strength because the companies are re- definitely going to sniff you out on that for sure. Mm-hmm. That's a very good point, and for everyone around, very tricky question. What do you want to be in five years? I think it's a question that can sell you or can actually drown you. Because if you say something very specific, I believe that you can cut different opportunities. Message to the world. I I like to say that I want to save the world. I think it's pretty neutral. When I'm being asked this question, <laughs> it's also kind of weird. No, but I think that you have to be also careful. It's maybe better to say what you want to work with, like I want to work with people, or I want to do、yes. this or that. Then you can actually open more chances because if you will brand yourself as a person who wants to be head of sales,、yes. then definitely yeah. So you don't want to be a head of sales anymore, and they, then you say no, I'm also into marketing. Then they think you're phony. Yes. Because you you just said something and then you are backing out from it, right? Yes. No. Absolutely. And I never actually thought about that before, but you're actually one hundred percent correct on that. Yeah. And I have to agree with you. So,、uh, Kate, would you have any advice or tip how to go about? Because you've mentioned if you don't one hundred percent have the skill, don't you know, like go into it. But what would you say if there is someone who has been working with sales, but they are actually like truly interested in marketing? Mm-hmm. And they maybe don't have the full skill set yet. Maybe they haven't done a course on it and so on. But they actually have this natural vibe. They are actually like naturally curious. They maybe have been listening to a podcast about it, like starting to develop the skills on that. Would that be good enough to start promoting yourself as a person that could also do marketing? Or how would you go about that? I would still like if you're not as good in something in a skill, but you definitely have the potential for it. Like actually, that's a really good, interesting point because I also. Ref- Reflected on this, I actually started taking marketing courses on Google, and that's actually those are absolutely free that you can take. And I just said, like, you know, I can definitely use a lot of these、uh, skills that I can definitely work on. And you can take like free courses and develop yourself, and and you can even get like certifications on Google,、uh, for example. Or you can take an online course and say, hey, like, you know, just you can say that in your CV, like, you know, I've developed these like skills because I've taken these free courses、uh, online, and you can do that or learned about it or taught myself. That also is really positive on your CV. That if you teach yourself something, you know, because that also means that you're a fast learner, and you can actually just go and, and prove that、uh, through maybe like doing a presentation or whatever it can be、uh, in a job interview. So that that would be my suggestion how how to go about it actually. Yeah, because very often when we are reinventing ourselves,、mm-hmm. it's great to look into past experiences and what we have actually, what which skills we have acquired. But I think it's also great to look into what you have potential in. Yeah,、absolutely. because you might have been doing something. For many years in your life, but you are actually passionate about something else, and maybe you don't really have the experience in it yet. But if you have passion for it,
if you are really into it, if you are passionate about that, I think it could be also a great place to look into. Exactly. That's why I'm also uh, part of like doing these uh, different talks is uh, and also being here is because I definitely want to like improve. I, I'm still like in the process of improving like public speaking and growing in this competence as well. And that's actually a really good point because this uh, I, I'm just getting the practice and, and just going for it and developing myself with that. So uh, again, thank you for that this experience as well. You're very welcome. Mm -hmm. You're very welcome. So uh, summing up what we have been talking uh, about until now. So look into your strengths and that strengths could also be potential. So not only looking into your previous experiences uh, in universities, different jobs or even private experiences, but also looking into your potential. What could actually become your strength and developing on it in maybe some free courses or even like looking for opportunities and yeah. developing those skills as a volunteer or something like that. Definitely. That could be something to build on your skills and then looking into your options. And yes. you've mentioned this really great thing about if it's specifically in Denmark that you are looking into those options that you can actually see what the market is searching for. Yes. And that could help you with your visa processes and so on. How else can you look into the options? Yeah, I mean, just go on the internet. <laughs> just go on the internet. Find find different portals. Like for example, there's another one called not Job Bank, uh, Job Index. You can go into like Job Index or different searches and just type in different like industries and see okay how many jobs are actually out there. And if it's like quite a few, then yeah, maybe this there's a quite a, a bit of potential for you out there. But if there's not so many, okay, well then yeah, just go on to like the next one and like kind of just get an idea of what you want to do just based on these uh, different job banks uh, for example as well so that's another tip what about creating your own options creating your own opportunities oh yeah definitely like another example actually I'm a very good friend with uh, an American woman who actually started her own business and uh, she was like a biochemical engineer or something like this and uh, actually to start her own uh, business because things weren't just going the way it is and she's like okay well I have a child I'm good with children. Okay, I'm just gonna go and sell uh, baby nappies, <laughs> so to say. Yeah. And it actually started with this, and now she has like her own store uh, in Aarhus and selling uh, baby products. So she definitely, I, I would say, she is a great example of just reinventing herself and uh, just going for it and going for another business. Uh, so yeah. So yeah. looking into the options could also be looking into you yourself creating opportunities. Yes, exactly. Yeah, just, yeah, exactly. Uh, Kate, what do you think about this approach? I was talking some time ago with my uh, career coach and she told me, Anna, you know what, go on those portals because you mentioned job index, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there is also work in Denmark, yes. JobNet, and actually I use a lot of LinkedIn jobs. I think it's, a, yes. it's quite, quite good uh, portal as well. And she said, look at the companies and look at the history of what they were hiring in and try to just drop them an email, mm. trying to figure out what they were searching for before. For instance, if it's a company that is hiring people that are needing marketing people and this pops out from time to time, try to go and write them an email. I think you might be looking for marketing people. I can do this and this and this. The other things she told me was to actually see what company my heart goes to and just try to, you know, write them an email with a pitch why you need to hire me or start to call them. She even mentioned that I should also go and walk directly into the offices, but I'm not sure if this is a not too bold movement. But she told me to be more proactive in a way if it's not even a, a job posting from that company, but you like a company or you see a tendency of them hiring in a special area, just write to them. What do you think about this? Did you ever use it? Yeah, that's actually quite interesting. I I have tried this. I've never been really been successful with it. But okay. I, that's the next thing I would like to I think we should go into the next part is about using your network. And I think that would be a great discussion to uh, just uh, continue with that actually with Yeah. But you have tried it and it didn't really work. It didn't work for me, but I'm not saying that you shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. I, everyone uh, works with something different. So you should just, you know, try it and see if it works for you. If it works for you, fantastic. Go for it. And if, you know, because we all have different personalities. So if it works for you, try it. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, but it didn't work for me. It doesn't say it's not going to work for you. Mm -hmm. So definitely just go and try different uh, things. Definitely. But Kate, what is your favorite uh, job searching portal? 
my favorite job searching portal. Actually, Job Index has been the most successful for me, but it also depends like on like what career. So like if you're going into sales, for example, Job Index is really good in that, and they also target do like mar uh, marketing and different things. Uh, that one's my personal favorite within Denmark that I have been very successful with. But others have been also successful in other other portals because like work in Denmark focuses more on engineering, for example. So maybe you find more engineering jobs there. So it all like you have to find the right portal that is right for your career as well. So it'll bear that in mind. Okay, so we've gone through looking into your strengths, considering your options. Of course, a very good idea, especially that we are here at You've Got Five Options. And your following tip would be to use your network. Definitely, absolutely. Like use your LinkedIn, uh, find communities uh, based on your interests and join, like international community. They have like a lot of different events there. Like just go on Facebook. There's a lot of different events there. Like just go and uh, make yourself uh, known and try to meet new people that are like based on your interests. I've tried that as well. And uh, also if you've worked at a job and you've had a good connection with the company, use them. Definitely. That actually uh, happened in my previous job, actually. They were like really happy with me, but but uh, just uh, they were going with a different strategy and that's just how it is uh, sometimes. And they were just more than happy to help me uh, find another job. And, uh, and actually that was the most successful uh, how I got my current job now. So, yeah. So you have actually used your previous em employer to be a strong network. Yeah. Yes. Uh, to help you find. But if you are new in Denmark and you actually don't have the network yet. You have, you know, went through very, very quickly through that. Let's explore that a little bit. So if you arrive as a new person, you actually don't have a network yet. That was one of my key challenges when I arrived to Denmark the first time. I didn't have a network. I just uh, simply, I was trying to find a job. Mm -hmm. When I was moving to Denmark, the market was very open. There were hundreds of jobs. It was really great. When I've moved three months later, the uh, market crashed. Uh, crashed and there was nothing. There was literally in three months, the decline in a number of jobs was crazy. And it's, everyone started to talk, it was 10 years ago, everyone started to talk about now is the time for the network. It's the only way to get a job. So when you arrive new one, how do you build your network? Yeah, that's actually a good question because when I first, this is just based on my personal um, experiences. I actually uh, went and uh, tried different expat uh, groups and also international community. And I also used my family as support as well. Like when I say family, I mean my, my husband's family. They were actually the ones there for me and helping me uh, use that network. And don't be a shy, like if you have a partner that is has a Danish background, like don't be shy to not ask for help and like, you know, get those tips and, and, and everything. But if you don't have that, you know, just go for it and actually what with me that was the first job I got was through job index and I got I went I was living in Flensburg and then I went to Sonderborg and like went and got uh, advice and tips on CV and different portals and I just said go for it and uh, I actually just applied and uh, as soon as I got my visa I got a job instantly like with the snap of my fingers and they and once I told them I got the visa they're like okay well you got the job and it was as simple as that and with that wonderful story, we are going to close uh, today's episode. And uh, if you want to know more, we will explore the network a little bit more in the next episode and the following two tips as well. So thanks a lot for today. Uh, we hope that you'll tune in for the next episode. You must. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye bye. 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 You are listening to You've Got 5 Options show, where we solve your life challenges. Remember that you can visit our website, the5options.com, where you can submit your challenge or find our previous challenges. That's all, folks. <laughs>